Black music is the manifestation of the black spirit. It speaks to our every emotion. Even more than this, black music helps sustain and direct our culture. It reminds us of our present situation in this country, reminds us of our past, and gives us hope and guidance for the future. Consequently, we wish to religiously inspire, politically motivate, and to culturally stimulate our people. If we can but come close to fulfilling this desire, then our existence is more than justified. Kaumba is a Swahili word, it means to create. So when we look at Kaumba and the word, it may mean to create, but the way it was expanded and expounded upon is the creativity that came from black community. Uh, people who had been coming out of slavery, um, whose ancestors maybe didn't have very much coming here, but the creativity that it took to survive in those situations, the creativity that comes from doing what you can with what you have, right? Not having a lot, but still being able to succeed with what you have, still being able to achieve and excel with what you have. That requires a particular type of creativity. So, you know, we water that down or shorten it, rather condense it, the creativity of doing what you can with what you have to leave a space better than you found it. The way our ancestors created and built so that each generation would have more than the previous. So that's what Kumba means and that's why we tie in this idea of leaving a space better than we found it. Uh, we want it to color and shape everything we do, but it's directly linked to the name Kumba. It's not a separate idea. Uh, but a part of how we define ourselves. Here we are in this moment. Here we are with our anger, our frustration, our rage, and our weariness, our dying hope that things will get better someday. Our dying hope that this incessant fight to make black lives, black hopes, and black dreams matter to this world will end someday. Here we are with our struggle once again. We've come a long way. We come a long way, yes. We come a long way. Kumba was founded in 1970. From the beginning, it was, I mean, largely because of the situation of black people at the time, it was very tumultuous, very political. Um, there was so much going on that was very political about black experience in America. A lot of the black students who were there did not feel welcome, did not feel that they had their own space. And so some decided to come together and create this space. And, uh, you know, there was lots of up and down process, administrative difficulties. Um, but eventually, uh, they were able to do that. There was definitely a huge aspect of activism in Kumba, both our supportive anti-apartheid movement, but also, you know, there were sit-ins and demonstrations and building takeovers. It's interesting that from 1970 all the way until now, this act of having black people and like non-black people together in a space together to celebrate blackness is still seen as a very radical act. I think that's where we kind of begin our side of activism. Kumba is still very dedicated to seeing, uh, to speaking out against injustice. When there is wrong, when there is something that needs to be addressed, um, both externally but also even within the group. It's really an important part of who we are and what we do. So the songs we sing, the protest songs, uh, those things will always hold uh, a very direct and proximate meaning for the members of the choir because there are always things in our time, in every generation of Kumba singers, uh, to which those things are applicable. And so again, we connect with our past because it gives us strength to move forward. 
Activism for Kumba is really in the small acts of people to people, supporting people, finding comfort in each other, and uplifting ourselves. But until then, let this be our song, let this be our anthem, let this be our war cry from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah anyhow. Amen. Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. Amen. Somewhere between Metropolis and El Paso, is the rest of our country, where we leap small children in a single bound with a single bound book. We teach them that this is the land of the free and the home of the brave for those who come in first. Place matters. First, second, third, place matters. In classrooms, all about race, race to the top, and pretend no child gets left behind. No child gets left behind, not behind. So being director wasn't ever really a part of my life plan. Right? I wanted to grow up and be the director of a choir. That wasn't what I was thinking. Uh, but you know, again, when the opportunity was presented to me, it wasn't something I could say no to. So many people think of their life in these, these steps. Uh, uh, in, in fact, sometimes losing sight of what our goal is. We're just jumping from place to place. But here I was given an opportunity to do something that from the beginning fulfilled me. Uh, provided all the growth opportunities I was looking for, you know. So people would often ask me, well, what's next? You know, what is this preparing you for? And in my mind, I was feeling like this is it. This is what I was looking for. There is so much to say about Sheldon. Um, I'm unsure of where to begin. I think that he has such a sense of humor during rehearsal that makes people think, just feel really welcomed um, if they're intimidated about you know, singing in front of other people or just meeting him. Um, but he also brings such gravitas um, and a lot of historical context to um, certain traditions about Kaumba and the music that we sing um, that really add a strong, a sense of authority um, and also it kind of like reminds us to be really grateful and honor um, the space. For a lot of people Sheldon is that huge figure and I think he really is Kuumba and he is a huge symbol and for myself also I feel like you can't separate Kuumba without Sheldon and rehearsal is Sheldon. It's like how he takes the space and how he fills it with his voice and how he fills it with his energy. I think everybody who's ever been in like a team sport or any sort of sport, you think of your coach. And I think Sheldon really was my coach and everybody in the space's coach. Somebody you can look to for like unending support. I don't even know where to end or begin with Sheldon, but I know that it wouldn't have been the space that it is without his leadership and without his like dedication and his effort. I think 50th year, the way I felt about it, and I'm sure that Tony also, was it's this idea of looking back as much as we look forward. So thinking about where we are right now in this space, making sure we uplift our history. And so for us, it was like making sure we have historical moments that acknowledge parts of our history that are important, but may not always be looked upon. And so for us, that was LGBTQ history. It was an acknowledgement of our ourselves and how we relate to activism and how we relate to continuing to be a part of this fight for making sure that black students have a space at Harvard. And so uplifting that history, our present, and then also thinking about the future. It's like 50 years is half of a century, so I think all of us were thinking about 
what it looks like afterwards. And so for this 50th year, we wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page, that this is an inclusive space that everybody should want and feel like they can be a part of, that they can walk in and that they can feel the same love and support that all of us as seniors and all of us as board members had felt when we entered. Students at Harvard University are being told not to return to campus after spring recess. Now, the school will move all of its classes online as concerns over the spread of the coronavirus continue to grow. A couple weeks ago, it was actually, I was at one of the endowment campaign events with Oakley is when I think like the news about um, coronavirus was like getting more serious in the United States and um, the cases were really getting very serious in Italy at that point, um, but they were only like a handful of cases in the United States at that time. And just to think in the last two weeks how much that has changed, God, it's mind blowing. Um, I think we were a, a little bit concerned, but I personally was trying not to worry until, you know, Harvard told me I can't do anything until then. You know, we have so much going on. I don't want the stress to get to us. We'll just keep going forward um, until we can't. And Tuesday morning, five days ago, I think, we got an email that you know, we have to leave campus indefinitely. And I think that's when I realized that things were over for the year. Um, it was honestly such a whirlwind and it took actually being, you know, kicked off of campus for, it's really hit for me. Being at that town hall, still reeling, still processing, but coming to terms with this difficult end to the semester. I think it was so necessary for the goodbyes, and because of that it was extremely sad, but it was so, I don't know, I think it encapsulated so much of what makes Kaumba Kaumba. I just thought about how much this space meant to me. I knew, like that's the reason why we were there and why we we're on board and why we made this space happen, but it becomes that much more real when you're in this space with a bunch of people singing for what could be the last time together. So the town hall meant a lot and I think it was beautiful that it still happened and I'm kind of unsurprised that it still happened. Like I didn't expect that people would show up but I think Kaumba always shows up and shows out for the people that we care about in the best way possible and so as a senior like that meant so much. So Kumba continues to be what it always was, a, uh, a space of community, of building, of artistic expression, a place where we can learn to celebrate black creativity and spirituality. That thing is something that continues to grow, what it means to be black. If you have a hundred black people in a room, you have a hundred valid black experiences. And so we learn from each other, from each and everyone's valid black experience. And that allows us to grow, that gives us more things to celebrate, uh, avenues of creative, ex creative expression. And so our opportunities, the, thing, the, the ideas are limitless. We can just keep going and keep growing. And I'm excited about that. <laughs>